welcome back. This is the final uh, video in the series. I have everything now on the uh, box here, everything ready to go on my wall. Here's the circuitry right here, and uh, I have now a signal generator here, an integrator, and a couple buffers and amplifiers here. And I'm going to use my oscilloscope. I'm going to show you what the signals look like going from the input to the output. And then we'll take a look at the uh, motor running, and then we'll take a look at the schematic and a little explanation there. And then uh, that will be the final of this series. Stay tuned. Yeah, the circuit turned on now, and uh, we'll give a little detail using a oscilloscope and show the waveforms here. Okay, so the first stage here is a uh, square wave generator, and that's going to generate a square wave. And let's take a look at that now. And that's a square wave, and it's a little bit rounded on the leading edge, but that's okay for this application. It's going to work fine. It gives me about a 4 volts peak, and it's about 20 kilohertz in frequency. And then that square wave now feeds into a wave shaping circuit, an integrator consisting of a capacitor and resistor. And when it goes through that integrator, it converts it to a wave like that. Now I have to increase the voltage waveform here on this because it attenuates the signal very much, but it converts a square wave now into a triangle wave. But the triangle wave now is only about 300 millivolts in uh, amplitude. The, uh, this circuit attenuates the square wave so much that we need some amplification. So now we take this back here on the voltage here. So it comes out like that as a triangle wave. And then we have to amplify that triangle wave. So now we take it to a power amplifier here. And we amplify that wave. And now we get it back to a 4 volt peak triangle wave. Now we feed that triangle wave into our Schmidt trigger circuit again. And we now end up with our pulse width modulated wave. Okay, so that's the, the waveforms of how they uh, go from the input to the output to the circuit. And now we'll take a look them at the motor and see how that's running now. I'm going to turn it on here. Here's I got the uh, speed control here, a knob here for speed control. My indicator light for that there is uh, feedback. And this is a fine adjust for the feedback. At uh, high speeds, I have to turn this back so the feedback's not so sensitive. This is a sensitivity control. I'll turn the switch on here. And we'll turn, turn on slow here. And then turn it back. And we'll put on nice and slow here. And again, this red light indicates that there's feedback, so I'll put a little bit of a load on the motor here. And the light comes on. So that's indicating that there's feedback coming back to give me some torque control here. Okay, so now we're going to do is we're going to take a look now. Now I have this temporary wired up. I have to put on the wall here later on. Now we'll take a look at the schematic and see how that uh, how the stages work. I got here now. I have a, a multi vibrator here, a square wave multi vibrator here, that puts out a 12, a 20 kilohertz uh, square wave, about four volts peak. And like I said, uh, that has to now because there is the uh, wave shaping integrator here, the triangle wave integrator here, this has a low impedance uh, and that could draw and that could cause the output of the square wave generator to, to uh, drop. So I had to put a, b a buffer amplifier in the center here between the two to match. That's an emitter follower that matches the impedance, the high impedance of the generator to the low impedance of the, of the integrator. The integrator now takes that square wave and converts to a triangle wave map because of the uh, heavy attenuation, the triangle wave again, like I said, is about 300 millivolts. So we take it through the sawtooth amplifier that amplifies it back to 4 volts and then that signal goes into the Schmidt trigger and then the rest of the circuitry works as before. Uh, now I have, instead of the input, instead of the feedback coming back to over here, I have it going back to the second transistor in the uh, Schmidt trigger circuit. And what I do is I take it into there and cause that transistor to go into cutoff and that allows the uh, pulse width to uh, modulate wider in that respect there. And that way there I'm, I'm not uh, doing any kind of feedback into the uh, original input like I did before. This just makes it work a lot better. Also on my lathe I have an extra potentiometer here. I have a, one on the circuit board here to get it rough adjust and I have my fine adjustment 6K here on the lathe itself to give me that sensitivity for the feedback. And that's uh, pretty much the schematic right there. That's how it works. And uh, that pretty much concludes uh, this whole series. And now I'll go ahead and put this on my wall and I'll have my use of my lathe to work again with. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.